question. Uh, you do the first one on this. Okay. When I'm writing about what happened, I'll often use a word and then think, no, no, that word doesn't fit. I'll use another word, and I and I go to synonyms in word word processing to find different words. I, I wouldn't use the word invade um, because it wasn't an army. Um, I would probably say arrived. But, uh, and I also think that when we talk about the British arriving in Australia, it was going to happen. Um, it had to happen at that time in history. If the British hadn't come, the French would have come, or, you know, around that time. So, um, no, I certainly wouldn't use the word invade. Um, um, I don't know, were you, thinking of, were you thinking of some other words other than, I mean, I, I, they arrived. They arrived, and, and you know, there were consequences. So. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Maria, do you want to answer this one? What word would you use to describe the first fleet? Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I sort of think of settlement. Um, like Susan, it's hard to use invade. I don't think that's technically an accurate description. I also would agree with Susan that if it wasn't the British, then the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, somebody was going to be here within the next 20 odd years. Um, the outcome could have been better, could have been worse, we'll never know. Um, and like as far as the concept of invasion goes, it has a very, very long history. It hasn't only happened, like somebody hasn't only displaced people in Australia all of our forebears in Europe would have been displaced at some point. It's just life. <laughs> yes. Just briefly, David. Yes, look, the, the question of invasion is really the key question of, um, of the historical debate in the national curriculum. Um, because if, if, if you think it was an invasion, then, um, then there has to be resistance by the Aborigines, or uh, it's, it, uh, <laughs> if the Aborigines said yes, come on in, you know, then then um, uh, then no one can say that the word invasion has no meaning. Um, but look, the, the use of the people who use the word invasion are not putting the British in their late 18th century context, and but by the end of the 18th century, Europe had been um, going around the world in some cases invading, in some cases buying land, in some cases um, spreading disease and there everyone died the minute the British, you know, got stepped ashore in the harbour where in Canada, wherever it was. Um, um, the, uh, the 400 years of European imperialism did not go, they didn't, um, they didn't fail to learn anything from it. The, the British, in fact, were incredibly critical of the, of the Spanish for, for the brutality they used towards the indigenous people of, <coughs> of um, Central America and, 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 and South America, and, um, and they were determined they would not do the same. And the instructions that um, Cook had and Philip had were that if um, they, they were to buy land, uh, they were to negotiate with land, um, or they were to, um, there, there, was a whole, there was a whole stack of, uh, of, of um, means that the imperial powers had developed over the, the three or four hundred years of, of European imperial history, so they didn't have to invade the place. Um, uh, in New Zealand, where the Maoris were, um, were fiercely territorial and, uh, and, and uh, much, much, much more uh, organised warriors than the Aborigines were, the British did not originally invade. They were welcomed ashore, they, they um, gave gifts, they, uh, and the Maori wars took place um, later in the piece, um, well, 18, 1830s, I think it was, um, but, um, but, um, but that was not, a, uh, the Maori Wars were not um, in uh, about the invasion by the British, they were, they were well, I, mean, I don't want to give you a lecture on the Maori Wars, um, sorry, but uh, it's, it's, it's the key issue, and that's why the question of, um, that's why I, I received such, in fact, what initially surprised me, you know, getting on for 10 years ago now, when I um, wrote a book about Tasmania and said, well, look, it wasn't, um, it wasn't frontier warfare, it wasn't genocide, um, it, it wasn't invasion, the British um, 
had a whole set, set of different policies. Uh, I mean, this was the period when um, the British were uh, uh, abolishing the, the, the slave trade. They were the um, they were the what we now regard as the most progressive society on earth in terms of policy towards indigenous people, and mainly that came from evangelical Christianity, not not the Church of England, but from but, but from the uh, the other uh, the other Protestant churches. Um, it was a, it was an article of faith for these people; they should do the right thing. And both um, Governor Philip and uh, Governor Arthur in Tasmania were um, were um, smack in the middle of this of this movement. Lachlan Macquarie's um, wife, uh, Lachlan Macquarie himself, was not evangelical, but his wife was a devout one, and she told him, "You've got to have orphan schools, you've got to have an Aboriginal school, you've got to do all this sort of stuff." Um, and to sort of transpose it to um, the American invasion of Vietnam is just rubbish. Uh, Dr. Richard, if you just stay, because this gentleman has got one for you oh, too. Okay. Uh, next, off you go. Uh, Keith, you said that uh, some things are definitely there in history, and the point I was going to make was the Nazis really weren't actually defeated. They have actually regrouped uh, bigger and stronger than ever, and we're seeing the resurgence of them as we speak in here tonight. The, the Nazis? Yeah, but the Nazi philosophy, their, their actual core principles are well and truly alive and well, and they, they certainly didn't defeat, uh, fully defeated in the war in terms of their core philosophy. It's still there, stronger than ever. Yeah. Um, but, but, but look, you know, they really, they really did lose World War II. I mean, uh, there might be, there might be a, a, a more recent um, revival of some of their ideas. I, I don't, I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about that because I, I can't, I look for it and can't see it myself. Um, but nonetheless, you, you've got to admit that um, the World War II was a massive defeat for Nazism, um, and it was a great victory for Western society and, and for USSR. Um, that's that's it, it, you, you can't kind of say oh we can't know anything um, there are no truths in history because um, you know some some um, a couple of diehard Nazis might have um, crawled into a hole and, and come out again ten years later and and got a you know a few dozen people to follow them that's you know that's that's kind of trivialising the, um, the 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 real outcome of the war was which was that um, the Western democracies and the USSR defeated not only the idea of Nazis, Nazism, but the whole society, everything. They, they destroyed their factories, their, their fuel supplies, they destroyed everything about it. And, and, and all the Nazi leaders killed themselves, you know? Um, it was a pretty big win, I thought. We'll discuss it later, eh?